We're looking at the first prairie that's nearest to Unity Chapel. Our contractors started earlier in the day. One of the first things that they'll do when they initiate a burn like this is to put in what's called a refugia. And just as the name suggests, it is a refuge. It's a refuge for the critters that live on these dry prairies so that when we do conduct the burn, not all of their habitat is burned, but rather we leave some behind so that the residual population repopulate that prairie when, when life emerges again this spring. The reason we, we put in these refugias here when we're um, doing this prairie work is a lot of the insects overwinter as eggs and not in an adult stage. And so um, this has a very good diversity of different plants that the insects will use. So we, we do that for the purpose of maintaining the insect population and diversity because a lot of these plants need very specific pollinators in order to keep doing well. One of the most important reasons we do it this early in the year is because these are these dry south-facing prairies that we call goat prairies and they warm up faster than any other part of the landscape. They're exposed most to the sun of any, of any other part of the landscape. So their life cycle begins earlier in the season. But what they've done is they've brought a fire line down the slope of the hill. And the idea there is that the, the slower the fire line moves, the longer fire is on that point in the landscape, thus creating those impacts that you want by putting fire on the landscape. So the slower the fire, the greater the impact. So what you see now is they're putting on the head fire, just as I described earlier. So you can see it does a great job of carrying fire, but it needs the help of the wind and the slope to go through that vegetation that's maybe more sparse and not as apt to carry fire in a backing way. There are a number of things that affect fire behavior that you hope all contribute to a successful day in the field. And one is sunlight. Let's start with sunlight. I mean, this is near perfect, right? It's very partly cloudy, and the clouds that we have are very wispy and serve to only minorly filter the sunlight. So you get good, bright sunlight beating down on the landscape, heating up the soil and heating up the fuel which encourages a rigorous burn. You want some wind. Um, too much wind is not good. Uh, neither is too little wind. So you want a little bit of a wind, a consistent steady breeze anyhow, that can give you some predictability in terms of how the fire might behave in relation to the direction that you want to manage the fire. The Driftless area has this a unique plant community that has become dependent upon fire. Before European settlement, fire used to sweep across this landscape and create a vegetative community that, as I mentioned, is dependent upon fire to thrive. In the absence of fire, since Europeans have settled and farmed this land, plants that are not tolerant to fire or able to encroach on this fire tolerant and fire dependent community. A lot of these natural communities like this prairie we're looking at got overgrown with species that would not otherwise be here if fire routinely swept across the landscape like it did years ago. So when we manage sites like this we sometimes describe it as trying to turn back the hands of time this prairie 25 years ago was largely covered with red cedars, which are typical invaders of these dry sites. Some forward thinking, ecologically minded people identified this as a really significant example of this type of landscape that really typifies the driftless area. It's the south facing, steep, shallow soil slopes 
that create the types of conditions that these prairies thrive in.